Trump changed the Republican Party, possibly forever. What's next for Trump and the GOP? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Be sure to hit that like button. It helps us with YouTube's algorithms. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So, have you ever seen one of those movies where the main villain has been defeated and everyone's happy, but then you realize there's still half an hour left? And then suddenly, guess who's back? That's Trump. Yes, even though Trump ultimately got defeated in the 2020 election, He's back with the office of the former president. Now obviously, office of the former president is not an official thing. Trump just made it up. He probably stole that idea from the not official but official sounding thing Joe Biden used, office of the president-elect. Of course, Biden stole that idea from Trump, who stole it from Obama. But just because the office of the former president is a made-up thing based on a stolen idea based on a made-up thing doesn't make it not a real thing. Someday, we'll just look back on it as the first time a former president has used it. The office, though, is not based in Washington, D.C. No, no, no. Too much swamp. That's why Trump is doing it in Florida, Palm Beach, capital of the former president. In its first statement, the office of the former president said it will carry on the agenda of the Trump administration through advocacy, organizing, and public activism, and that President Trump will always and forever be a champion for the American people. Now, some have suggested this might be illegal. According to U.S. law, a person using the presidential seal to give a false impression of legitimacy can be fined or imprisoned for six months, or both. However, these two seals are not the same. And former presidents are allowed to use the presidential coat of arms for their offices. That's the eagle in the middle of the seal. The office of Barack and Michelle Obama uses it. And so does the office of George W. Bush. Besides, Trump has bigger legal issues to worry about, like another impeachment trial. I'll get to that in a moment. But Trump revolutionized the Republican Party. He got more votes than any Republican in history. He also got more minority votes than any Republican in 60 years. No one expects Trump to go quietly into that good night. In fact, in his farewell address, Trump promised he would be back. We will be back in some form. I will always fight for you. I will be watching, I will be listening. Always watching and listening? It sounds like Trump is angling for the office of Santa Claus. Either that or the NSA. Not long after, Trump told the Washington Examiner, we will do something, but not just yet. In other words, we haven't yet seen Trump in his final form. So what is the future of Trump and the Republican Party? More on that after this short break. Welcome back. Of course, if YouTube demonetized this episode, you won't have seen anything, which is why we need your support. You can support our work with a dollar or more per episode over at patreon.com slash America Uncovered. One thing is very clear. Trump will still have a very active role in the Republican Party. Now, there have been rumors that Trump would start his own political party. And recently, a new political party called the MAGA Patriot Party did file with the Federal Election Commission. However, the Trump team says they have no affiliation with it. Though there is talk of Trump building his own social media site. It's going to be called Trumper, where you Trump Trumps. Each Trump is limited to a single, run-on sentence with at least one word in all caps. Anyway, 
Trump is still leaving his mark on a post-Trump administration Republican Party. Sure, there have been calls for the Republican Party to dump Trump, like there have been since 2016. But it looks like that's not going to happen, because the GOP has a fever, and the only prescription is more Trump. Just days after leaving office, Trump recorded this phone call endorsing Arizona Republican candidate Kelly Ward. She's running to be reelected as the Republican chair of the Arizona Republican Party, and she is a terrific person. She's a person I know. She's somebody that uh, you'll never find anybody more dedicated to every aspect of what we're all dedicated to. And so I give her my complete and total endorsement. And sure enough, she got reelected. But Trump is only just beginning with the endorsements. He also endorsed his former press secretary, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, for Arkansas governor. Depending on how well these endorsements pan out, we could be seeing a future where Republican Party candidates must be vetted by Trump. Jason Miller, a campaign advisor, said earlier this month that Trump would be involved in the 2022 midterms, with the immediate focus being to help Republicans win back both chambers of Congress. And then there's the long-term goal, another Trump presidency. Former acting director of national intelligence, Richard Grinnell, recently was on Newsmax. He was asked if he thought there should be a new party, a patriot party. He said no, and that Trump plans to run again. Donald Trump is the head of the Republican Party still. Let's make no mistake and about that. He's still the most popular politician, and he's going to decide what he wants to do. He's told me personally multiple times that he does want to run again. But most Democrats, and some Republicans, want to make sure that never happens again. Trump was impeached a second time by the House of Representatives. Ten Republicans joined the Democrats in doing that, making it the most bipartisan impeachment in U.S. history. One of those Republicans was Liz Cheney. She's the third-ranking Republican member of the House, but you probably know her as the daughter of former Vice President Dick Cheney. And she is exactly the kind of establishment Republican many Trump supporters don't like. The Senate impeachment trial technically began this week, with the swearing-in of the senators. However, the trial won't really start until February 9th. But in a sense, it might be over before it's even begun. On Tuesday, Senator Rand Paul forced a procedural vote in the Senate over whether holding an impeachment trial after Trump was no longer in office was unconstitutional. The motion was defeated, 55 to 45. Five Republican senators joined the Democrats to vote against dismissing the trial. But Senator Paul is saying that this vote proves that Trump's impeachment is dead on arrival. That's because a conviction requires 67 senators. So if every Democrat voted to convict Trump, 17 Republicans would have to as well. But if 45 Republican senators already think the trial is unconstitutional, they would be unlikely to convict Trump. However, some Republicans said the vote did not necessarily indicate their views on the merits of the House's case against Trump. So it's possible they could still vote to convict Trump, but it's unlikely. The issue of whether the Senate can convict a president after he's no longer president is just one of the complicated questions about this impeachment trial. There's also the question of whether the Senate can decide to bar Trump from ever holding office again, and whether this trial will make President Biden jealous that all the media are still focused on Trump. Don't worry, we'll cover the impeachment trial in a future episode of America Uncovered, where we focus on Trump. So if you thought Trump was going to disappear, I'm sorry to tell you, there's still a long way to go in this movie. So what do you think about Trump and the future of the Republican Party? Talk to me in the comments below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.